Hello everybody, my name is Joy and welcome to Home Made by Raius. I just started up the game, which uh, came out two days ago, and this is what you see. You're an adventurer for hire. You take a variety of jobs and contracts to earn a living, usually involving hunting monsters or criminals, escorting merchants and royalty, etc. It's the peak of one of the worst winters in years, and a warm fire quickly became a necessity to survive. Not long ago, you purchased your own home on the outskirts of town. It's a nice change of pace from moving in between inns all the time, but after so many days of returning to an empty bare home, you feel slightly bored of the routine. No oh god, bored already. Nevertheless, you keep on working. Alright, now the developer of this game mentioned that... Let me get my stuff out of the way. The developer of this game mentioned that this is a short game, a nice little storytelling type of game, and that's really what I'm in the mood for right now. So, oh, and by the way, I would recommend downloading this instead of playing it in the um, Game Jolt client, I believe it's called, because there will be no sound, probably. So, there's my nice little fireplace. Anything to this side? So, I'm a white hat adventurer. What did that read? Go out to work for the day, press E. Let's see what does this do? The fire crackles warmly. Oh, that's all I have to say? Okay. Well, what's on this side? I thought I just came home. No? Alright. Well, I guess we go out to work. You spent the day tracking a beast that has been eating the local farmer's cows. Dot dot dot. You eventually track it back to its lair and defeat it, receiving several cuts and bruises in the process. You claim your well-earned reward and then return home. Okay, so I returned home. Let's see if there's any other options now. Settle down for the night, press E. Let's, let's look at my fire again. The fire crackers warmly. Okay, no, that's the same. So let's settle down for the night. You make a simple meal and sit next to the fire, eating it. There's not much else to do, and the day has you worn out. You go to bed early. Okay, that was day one. I'm not sure if I can do anything to actually... Like, proceed the story. I don't know if I can do anything that would make the outcome different. Maybe that's why it's short, because there's different endings, but I don't know. You escort a merchant carriage between two towns, facing numerous packs of bandits along the way. The long travel in the cold and frequent fighting is draining you, but you are given a good sum of gold and some food as payment. <clears throat> you return home exhausted. Sorry, my voice might crack a little bit. I am not 100% today as you might. See? But that's okay. That's why I like these type of games. A nice little story. Okay, I'm gonna keep checking the fire because you don't know. There's always like little things in this game. Oh. Once again, you make a basic meal and fall into the chair next to the fire. You throw some more wood on the fire and go to bed. Do I? Do I do that now? The fire crackles warmly. Go out and work for the day or... No, okay, that's, that's just my option. That's what I can do. You work as the bodyguard and guide of a lord visiting a nearby town. Although he's accompanied by four of his own guards, he hired you for your knowledge of the area. The Lord is an unpleasant man, but the work is better than destroying monsters' nests in swamps. While walking through the markets, a clearly inexperienced pickpocket barges onto the Lord and dashes off with a pouch of coins. Don't just stand there, fools! Catch that scum and bring him back here! You'll pursue the thief th through a few streets, but quickly catch up to him in a side alley and tackle him to the ground. The thief is a very young man. Maybe still a teenager. Please, sir. Don't kill me. I can't leave my brothers alone to, def to fend for themselves. Please just let me have this coin in my life and I swear I never cross you again. You're asking quite a lot there, brother. Oh, I have a choice now. Okay. Take the coin back or let him keep the coin. Well, I have been hired for this work. So I'm not going to kill him. That that's one thing that's for sure. I was I'm happy I don't need to make that choice. So I can choose to take the coin back to Lord Douchebag, or let him keep the coin and let him fend for his brothers. Yeah. You know what? I think if he's an inexperienced pickpocket, he might still have other means to make money. So I think in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and take the coin back. 
Because after all, that's what I'm hired for. That's the promise I kind of made. So I'm not going to be a douche about that. You take the coin pouch back from the thief and tell him to run. He scrambles to his feet and sprints around the corner out of sight. And by the way, if he would have stolen the coin, if he would have taken it with him, the Lord might go after him and endanger his life even more. So that could be a bigger problem. You tell the Lord you couldn't catch the th thief, but he dropped the pouch during the chase. That's come to serve punishment. But I'll be merciful today. See, I got a feeling he wouldn't be as merciful if he got his little gold back. You at least got me the coin back. That's what matters. Take half of it as payment. You may leave. Your work here is done. Well, thank you. So after that, you return home. Yes, I haven't had the best day today. Like, not horrible or anything. Just, I, I've, I've haven't been sleeping a lot. And I ate like a ski-sized chocolate bar. Let me, let me show you this. This is, sorry, this is not related to the game, but let me just show you this. I ate one of these. Oh, no branding. It's legitimately ski-sized. And upon the fertile soil of my face, there currently grows a forest of pus. So yeah, now we got a little disgusting part out of the way. You know, I don't feel so well. The fire crackles warmly. And it's entire, entirely my fault. My own fault. Settle down for the night, I said settle down for the night. You practice some sword play before once again going to sleep early. Sword play. Anything in the fire? The fire crackles warmly, still crackles warmly. You spot an unusual request on the notice board in town. A traveling alchemist is looking for a place to stay until winter ends. They're offering a hefty payment for this. Well, he can cuddle up with me. You decide to take the quest and go meet them. You enter the local tavern and as stated on the notice, the alchemist is sitting in the back corner by herself. Herself. Oh, so it's a lady. You show her the notice and she beams with joy. You're a lifesaver. Thank you. That's not a hope of me getting my stock back home with the winter being as bad as it is. And none of the inns would let an alchemist stay because I'm apparently a hazard to the other guests. Don't worry, I won't set your home on fire or blow it up or whatever it is people think alchemists do. Though I may need to bring a few of my own things so I can continue working while the weather has me cooped up around here. An alchemist actually might be useful to me. As she says this, she drops a sack of coins on the table. You're surprised the table can take that much weight. Oh, don't exaggerate. You return home with the alchemist. Oh, wow, that's a sexy alchemist. A sexy pixelated alchemist. Okay, so that really spruced up the place. And now there's music. That's nice. Thanks for letting me dump my stuff in here. Besides, this place seems like it needs more life in it anyway. Hey, you don't really spend a lot of time here, huh? No, I do not. I'm an adventurer. I appreciate your stance. Let's settle down for the night. With the alchemist's help, you make some dinner and the two of you sit next to the fire to eat it. You both talk about work and the weird people and places you've encountered as a result of it. For the first night in a long time, you spend much of it laughing and talking cheerfully. You're surprised when you realize how late it is. You help the alchemist unpack the last of her belongings and after showing her to her room, you head to bed. Alright, anything else? Morning! Head out this early? Here, take some of these with you. They're much better than those mass-produced potions you've been using before now. Oh god, you're one of those. She hands you several vials of healing potions and medicinal bandages. That's great. Oh, no comment about the fire this time? Alright. Well, thank you, my lady. I'll be off. You take a job as a career for a nearby, nearby town smith, delivering weapons and armor to the city. It's a long work, and trekking through the mounds of, mounds of snow to get from the town to the city just makes it worse. After returning from the deliveries, you go to claim your payment from the smith. As you enter the shop, you see the smith talking to his daughter, a somber look on his face. When he sees you in the doorway, he urges his daughter to go upstairs. You can tell from here that she is unwell. Her skin is snow white, and she seems to be breathing slightly heavily. She rushes upstairs, rushes upstairs at her father's urging. Welcome back, friend, the smith says, smiling warmingly. You're here for the payment, I assume. Just give me a second while I find the pouch. While he searches for the coin pouch, you think about the daughter, feeling worried. Ask about daughter or don't ask. Well, it's not, it's not really my business, but if it's not my business, he can just tell me so, and maybe he would appreciate the help. 
And in case he doesn't appreciate the help, then well, that's fine with me too. So I, you know, let's ask. He, he called me friend. You mentioned how his daughter seemed unwell and asked if there's any way you can help. His expression darkens for a second before you returning to his usual jolly smile. No, no, there's no problem. She, she's got a flu, it seems. Nothing serious. He hands you your payment and bids you farewell. Please don't tell me it's the plague and I'm gonna die too. You return home worried about the smith and his daughter. I am a little worried. Hello there. Welcome back. I hate to ask you this, but do you think you could help me make some potions later tonight? I have a pretty big batch order I need to fill for tomorrow. Don't worry, they're only basic ones. I'll show you how to make them. Well, of course. Settle down for the night? Okay, so... I, I can't... Okay, I can't talk to you anymore. So I don't want to just go to bed, you know. You spent the night helping the alchemist making batches of potions of various kinds. You learn a lot about alchemy in the process. And you place the boxes of the new potions in the alchemist's carriage outside. You remember the smith's child and ask her if she is able to cure illnesses. According to her, if the sickness hasn't advanced too far, then it's usually possible. You clean up the leftover ingredients and apparatus while talking about the day's work and then go to bed. Anything else to say? Oh, it's morning again. You're heading out now? I'm going in a few minutes too. Thanks again for your help yesterday. Without you, I wouldn't have had time to even eat or sleep last night. Turns out we've made slightly too many potions, so here, take the extras. You take the extra potions and bring them with you. I must be packed with potions now, that's useful. You end up passing through the same town as yesterday on the way home from a monster hunt. You hear crowds of people shouting and cursing a few buildings over. You think it might be coming from the smith's shop and you run there instantly. There's a mob of townspeople outside the shop trying to break the door down. Among the shouts and roars you hear what some of them are saying. She'll turn soon, the longer she lives, the more danger we're in. Oh no, it's a crazy mob. You must kill her, there's no chance for her. The majority of the mob seemed blinded by rage, shouting much worse things. Kill the demon. The child must die or we all die. You thought you could hide her infection from us. Do you want to kill us all? Oh god, is she gonna be a vampire or something? You approach the mob and a few of them turn to you. Adventurer. The smith's daughter has been infected by a demon. It's only a matter of time before she becomes an abomination herself and kills us all. I'm not sure if this is just a crazy mob or if it's actually true because it is a world with potions and magic apparently, so... You can help us, yes? Please kill the child and the smith if you have to. And you can keep everything in that shop and we'll even pay you for the work. Say you have a way to cure her or force the town people to leave. I, I might not have a way to cure her. I know that if the disease hasn't advanced too far, my friend might be able to help her. But... Well, okay, there's no way for me to actually kill them. So I think this would be the better option. Because either way, they could end up hating me. So I'd rather attempt to cure her. You explain that there's a way to cure the child. Some of the townspeople realize how hastily they acted on their fear. A small few of them keep trying to break into the shop. The calm townspeople restrain their enraged friends, probably their attempt to make up for their mistake, and rush you into the shop. You tell the smith you're here to help and you know of a way to cure the daughter. My apologies, friend. But I don't think I can trust anyone right now. My own neighbors just tried to murder us. Some of them using weapons I made for them personally. As she says... As he says this, he looks to his daughter, who is behind the counter. She seems barely conscious. The smith sighs and picks her up in his arms. I have no choice but to trust this isn't some trap. Lead the way. You and the smith bolt out of the house and don't stop running until you get home. You can hear the townspeople fighting amongst themselves in the distance. Eventually, you reach home. You tell the alchemist what happened. She gathers all of the necessary supplies and asks you and the smith to help her. For what feels like hours, the three of you work to make potions, antidotes and medicines. As you near the end of your stock supplies, the child's breathing calms. Her skin regains its color and she falls unconscious. 
The alchemist wipes her brow and takes a deep breath. That should do it. She'll be as healthy as ever by tomorrow. All she needs is rest. So we don't actually know what illness this was. Well, they do, but I don't. The smith falls into a chair, sobbing with joy. Thank you, friends. I have no words to express my gratitude. Whatever you may need, I'm forever in your debt. I hope the supplies aren't going to be a problem now. We don't even have a home to return to now. I couldn't stand to look my neighbors in the eye again. At least some of them realize the error of their ways, thanks to you. You tell the smith that they can stay here for as long as they need. Does your kindness have no limit? That's twice now you've saved us. We'll find a way to pay you back, I swear it. The three of you clean away the supplies and equipment and put the home back the way it was. There we go. Oh, but that's just a really little girl. Even if she would turn into a vampire, that would be more adorable than creepy. Hmm. Sorry, just warming up my throat here. Let's see, let's talk to you. I'm glad we could help her. I imagine she'll be perfectly fine by the time you've arrived home tomorrow. Let's see, thank you for all you've done, friend. I think I'll stay up and watch her for tonight. Watch over her for tonight. Let's see, can I talk to her? No, she is unconscious. But she's breathing. She's breathing, that's good news. So, let's settle down for the night. You stay up talking to the smith about how his daughter became infected. Apparently, the two came across a lesser demon while out in the woods. It managed to cut the child before the smith cut it down. He tried for days to find a cure himself, fearing what would happen if the people knew of his daughter's illness. His fears were eventually realized, and that's when you came along. Okay, so it was an actual demon here. You talk for a bit longer before eventually going to sleep exhausted. The smith stayed up all night watching over his daughter. Alright, good morning everyone. Still sleeping. Good morning. You're leaving for work, I assume? Good luck out there? Once my daughter wakes up, I'll find a way to continue working on my craft. I have no intention of just being a freeloader here. Don't worry about it, man. It's all good. Hey, looks like he stayed up all night last night. I even told him countless times that she'll be fine, but he refused to sleep. Anyway, good luck in work today. Here, the usual. You take the potions, potions and bandages. Oh, okay, so you actually give me a steady supply here. That's practical. You take a, do a job defending miners from the monsters lurking in the dark, winding tunnels. At the end of the day, you use some of the alchemist's medical medicinal bandages. You can practically feel your wounds vanishing. You collect your reward and return home. Curious as to how the smith's daughter is doing. Ah, uh, she's up. She's woken up. As you can see, she seems to be full of energy too. If only she wasn't so shy as to keep it all bottled up. It's a relief to see the two of them safe, though. Considering what they went through, things could have been a lot worse. Hello there. Are you gonna rip my throat out? Um, Dad says you saved our lives. I don't know how to thank you for something like that, but um, thank you, friend. We are in your debt. That's what Dad would say, right? Did that sound okay, Daddy? I think they understand, sweetie. Even a grown man like myself can find the words to thank them for what they did. You don't need to worry about something like that. No, man, don't worry about it, little girl. She woke up a few hours ago. More full of energy than ever. Ah, and I also picked up some things in town so I can continue smithing to some extent here. Only some basics. I'll need to use the nearest town smithy from time to time. The alchemist said she could look after her while I'm out. My daughter is a bit shy around new people, but in time, she'll certainly warm up to you both. Alright. I guess we settle down for the night. The four of you talk about various things for the night. The smith's daughter remains mostly quiet by her father's side. Occasionally, she throws a question away in... The, he throws a question her way in an attempt to get her to open up some more. She still seems awkward in a new environment. It seems she'll need some more time to settle in before she can feel completely comfortable around you and the alchemist. The smith's daughter goes to sleep early and you and the others follow suit a few hours later. Alright, morning everyone. Ah, good morning, I've just finished the gift for you. It should help keeping you safe. If your back is to the wall. Sorry, I read that wrong. 
He gives you a masterfully crafted dagger complete with ornate carvings and indentations. I love more where that came from. Look at it as my way of saying thanks for everything you've done for us. Ah oh, man, that's cool. Thank you. Anything to say? I don't even know your name. I don't know any of your names yet. Good morning. Please stay safe. I sure do will. Hey there. Here, you know the drill. She hands you some potions and medicinal bandages. Come home safe. Come home safe and try not to get too cut up out there. I don't want you I don't want you to terrify the poor child. Oh no, that would be the worst for concerns at that point. You take a job gathering boar pelts in the woods. You don't know why exactly anyone needs boar pelts, but you don't really care as long as you get a reward. Although the wind and snow makes the work uncomfortable, it's an easy day, and you turn in the pelts to collect your payments. You arrive home earlier than usual. Alright. Welcome back. Um, Dad's out at the smithy in town, but he'll be back later on. The alchemist has been looking after me all day. I don't mind though, she's funny and really friendly. I've been learning a lot of things about potions as well. Oh, hey, you're back way earlier than usual. The smith isn't even home yet. I've been looking after the little one since, she, since he left. I feel like she's opened up a lot as well. She's been taking an interest in alchemy. I told her to make some basic stuff and she's taking to it pretty well. She has talent. She's also been asking a lot about your work. I think she'd like it if you talk to her about it later on. But like now? No, no, I can't talk to her about it, though. So let's settle down for the night. The three of you talk by the fire. The smith's daughter is clearly more comfortable here after spending time with the alchemist. She asks you about your adventures. You tell her about some of your more interesting jobs. Her eyes are wide with wonder while you talk about the monsters you've hunted, the people you've met and everything else that comes to mind. The, smith's, the smith arrives home. He's... His face lightens when he sees all of you. The four of you stay up talking cheerfully through the night. Eventually, if you're force you force yourself to go to bed. Well, good morning everyone once again. Good morning, friend. I trust you slept well. It's amazing how quickly she's opened up to both of you. I guess it's all thanks to the alchemist. I really wonder where this is gonna go. I wouldn't have thought she'd be so good with children. Anyway, good luck out there. Well, maybe you can hook up, you two, you know. Not me, though. I'm an adventurer. I don't need that. Good morning. Come home safe, okay? And also, um, when you get home, do you think you could show me how to be an adventurer like you? I know it's dangerous for my age, but I at least want to know how to use a sword and keep people safe. You tell her you teach her if it's okay with her father. Yeah. Really? Thank you. I'll ask him as soon as I'm finished helping the alchemist. Yeah, they really don't use any names. Hey, good luck today. It looks like she wants to help me out with my work from time to time. She really has taken a shine to the whole, t whole thing. While talking, she hands you the usual potions and bandages. Yes, this game is really... Okay, I need to, I'm gonna finish this game and then I'm gonna wrap up my thoughts about it. The day is once again unremarkable. You hunt some dead animals and... You hunt some animals and gather some meat for a village while the local hunter is unwell. You take your payment and return home. Well, hello, hello. Hey, welcome home. Thanks to the little one, I managed to make enough stuff for the day that I can actually relax for once. Hmm? You're asking why I'm still holding that potion? Honestly, I don't really know. Habit, maybe? Yes, you've been holding that thing since the beginning, right? Right? I don't remember. Welcome back. My daughter's been telling me how she wants to learn to fight. This might surprise you, but I have no problem with it. She should know how to defend herself someday, so why not start young? Doesn't surprise me at all, I mean, you're a blacksmith. My only request is that you use these instead of steel weapons. A pair of finely carved wooden swords. Yes, that might be wise to practice with. I meet them earlier after she first asked me about learning. They should make things a bit safer than swinging those three-foot razor blades around. Yes. I would not have done that, by the way. Welcome back. Dad said he'll learn. He'll let me learn to use a sword. When can we start? Well, not right now. We're gonna settle down. You teach the smith's daughter some of the fundamentals of defense and swordplay. Oh, okay. Apparently right now. Evasion, distance, angles, and striking. The concepts don't come naturally to her, unlike alchemy. She's clumsy on her feet and is easily flustered, but she refuses to stop until she makes some progress. After a few hours, she is already better than when she started. She is better at staying at a safe distance 
and is slightly more confident with her footwork. You call it at that for the night. She has much to learn, but she clearly has to drive to keep improving. The smith and the alchemist sat nearby and chatted the whole time. After you finish training, the four of you eat dinner and talk amongst yourselves. You go to bed afterwards, promising the smith's daughter, Doctor, I found a mistake, I found one, that you'll train with her every day you're able. Good morning. I don't think I've ever seen my daughter enjoy herself as much as when you were sparring last night. In fact, since we've been staying here, she's been happier and more energetic than usual. All the more reason for me to be thankful for the two of you. I really wonder what would have happened if I would have picked the other decision. Seems like she's about to stop practicing again already. She only woke up. She only... She only... I think you meant she only just woke up. How much energy does that child have? As per usual, take these. You take the potions and bandages. Stay safe out there. Alright. Morning. I'll be practicing some more while you're out, so I'll be even better by the time you get home. Come home safe. I will. I'll try my best. The color changed. You spent the day hunting a monster that has been eating a village's crops. Or maybe it hasn't changed. Maybe that's just... Me. You track it down and defeat it. Any injuries you're... You take a quickly remedy remedied with the alchemist's supplies. You take your payment and set off home. As you trudge through the wind and snow, you realize you've been looking forward to returning home each day. Something you haven't felt in far too long. You don't know how much longer this winter will last, or if the others will choose to live somewhere else once it ends. You would gladly let them stay if they wanted to. And something tells you they might end up doing just that. That will be a choice to be made much later on though. You approach the front door and realize that right now, the only thing you really care about is that you're home. The end? Ah, oh, that's the end? I'm waiting. I think I think that's the end. I think that's the final thing. Okay. Well, I really like this. This was really a storybook type of game. There wasn't really a lot of gameplay to it. It was just really walking from the left to right and talking to people. But, you know, it's fun to hear a story like this. I like games like this because they're nice and relaxing to do. So I don't know if it has different endings. Um, I'll, I'll look that up, see if I can find something. But I'm not sure. I mean, that seems worth trying. So if you want to do that, go ahead and look in the description. I'll leave a link to the game there. And... Yeah, that's really all I have to say about that. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye! Alright, before I leave, I'd still like to say that I am dead set on finishing the hunt. It, it might just take me a while before I get past the forest, but I'm working on it. I have like 80 minutes of footage of me failing there. And, you know, I, I asked the developer about it and he actually updated the game. He put a save point right before the forest. So I'm still working on that. I'm dead set on finishing it and I'm definitely going to do that. And I also want to play the big elk that is made by, I believe by Game Logs Out. If it's not true, you will see something pop up here telling me I'm stupid. But that's one thing that I want to play. And if you have any other suggestions, I will gladly play those games. So yeah, that's all I wanted to say. If you have any suggestions, please leave them down in the comments or on my Facebook or on my Twitter. So again, thanks for watching. Bye!